I am Vinny Tartarus, folks. Your good intentions have been stolen, but don't worry. I'm here to help you get them back. You may be soft and succulent at the beginning of this process, but hang in there. Before long, you will be lean and mean guaranteed, and you will be ordering. Eat happy Italian. Yeah. And here she is, back for another round, another month, Monday. Money. <laughs> Monday. What? Where's the money? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm still There's waiting. There's a lot for of it. promises about money. <laughs> the lucrative career of podcasting. Anna Vocino. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the money? Yeah. Where's the money, Vinny? I think Joe Rogan got it all. They forgot to just. money penny, it's money, Vinny. Yeah, money, Vinny. Ooh, I like the way you think. Do yeah. people know who Money Penny is? Because I don't know if they've carried on that character in in the Bond series. They, if anybody has their head out of a the, a pert dirt pile, should know who Money Penny is. Yeah, yeah, she's as smooth as Tennessee whiskey. Oh, that's right. Am she, I now? Oh yeah, you are pretty. You're as sweet as strawberry wine. Yeah, you, you know the song, right, Anna? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a this is a favorite of. A lot of ladies. Yeah. Chris Stapleton. This is that romantic. Yeah. Hey, you know, folks, if you ever want to have a great time, go watch black guys listening to Chris Stapleton for the first time do Tennessee whiskey on YouTube. Because that's a, a category. Of, yeah. Yeah. A lot of Americans, you know, they'll go, oh, we don't listen to country music. We, you know, we like whatever we like. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but every now and again, like th there's a great one. There's a great Chris, one where Chris Stapleton you know, crosses the borders. Well, no, what they do is they'll the get them. Like, there's the one where the first one I remember being done was the song by, um, we we're talking about him a few weeks ago, the drummer for Genesis, Phil Collins. Phil Collins. In the air tonight. Yeah. And the whole time, these two guys are sitting there just listening and not really getting into it. But when he kicks in with that drum solo at the end, yeah. they yeah. lose their shit. And they yeah. go, wait a minute. They, they, one of them actually stops. And, wait a minute. That's a white dude? <laughs> <laughs> Which is, even, even crazier, a white British dude. Yeah, yeah. It, whiter than white. Like, white people are not as white as that dude. Whiter than mayonnaise. But, so, you know, the the... African Americans with the country and Western music, they'll go, nah, we don't listen, we don't listen. But when you hear that song, it, it's so soulful, right? Oh, it yeah. just crosses all genres. I have seen so many people when that song comes on, whether it's at a restaurant or a bar or you're at a party, they just stop. <laughs> it's just like people have a moment with that song. It's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's and he's by the way, um, as you know, I'm a big fan of you know, cowboy boots. I've been wearing them for years. You know, since, yeah, since first or second grade, and uh, I I actually have a pair of Lucases who they're called you know the the Chris Stapleton edition Lucasi boot. Yeah, got one of those in my collection. Oh, that's right. Had them on just just yesterday, I think. Yeah, I call what them my Tennessee they? whiskey. Boot. They're they're a leather. They're a, you know a a really nice leather. And okay. uh, they're brown, brownish, you know, kind of beat up now. I've had them for a couple of years. But, you know, the more beat up they get, the better they get. You right. always look good in cowboy boots. That's a good look for you. Um, when I showed up to D.C. a couple of weeks ago, I had on my Vinny Texas tuxedo. There's a picture on my Instagram of me and Tony Hampton. He's nicely dressed up in a suit. And I'm dressed up in the Texas tuxedo, my Jay Leno special shirt, yeah. along with a pair of Levi's. And uh, I, I think, you know what? I'm not sure. I cannot say for sure, but I might have had those boots on in that photo. Oh, I'm look at the photo and okay, see if I can sir. see if the boots are actually in the photo. I don't know if we cropped that part out or not. You uh, might have cropped it out. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, yeah, you can't see my. I don't even think I didn't crop the picture. So I'm pretty sure I had those boots on because I went, you know what? These are kind of comfortable all day boots. All of my boots are super comfortable. So anyway, um, but -a -boo -boo. Anna, we're going to be talking about weightlifting today. 101. 
101. And we sit, do sit these, down and get a notepad, y'all. Yeah, we do this every kind of couple of times per year. Now, a lot of people, they read my book and then they're surprised to learn that I know anything about weight training because Why? they think I'm this ultra endurance athlete. Guy? It's like, yeah, he's just this ultra athlete, this endurance guy. He only knows how to go long. You're known as the ski skates guy. That's what you're known for. Yeah. 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 Of course. You the only infamous you ski skates of 2016. <laughs> yeah. I did those things every day for like a year. I, I know like, Serena oh. would be like, oh, you should see him on the ski skates. <laughs> yeah. Like, so it's these kind of things made so you can mimic cross country skiing on the road. And I that think was that's just, awesome. I would love to try them. Yeah, I went out to Thousand Oaks every day and the the small the least amount I would do, you would have to have the poles, you know, the the big yeah. cross country ski poles except they had rubber tips on them on the bottom, yeah. so, you know. Yeah. Actually, no, they had like a metal tip. Oh. It was a metal tip, but it wasn't pointy. It was like, you know, so you don't so you were able to do the movement, you know, you were able to grind in and do the skate ski movement. And these things are long. They're about about two and a half feet long each. And you use your regular ski boot, your cross country ski boot, you know, where it's just hooked in in the front. It, you know, every cross country skier in the off season, this is how they train, but they train at a facility where, you know, they actually make asphalt trails for them to go on. I was out in Thousand Oaks. I found a five mile loop. And the least I would do in between clients is one loop. Sometimes I would do as many as three loops. That's right. I would how, many, how long did it take you to do one loop on the ski skates? I can't remember. I can't remember. But it was a workout, man. Every, I mean, it was a kick-ass because cross-country cross country skiing is a kick-ass workout. Very difficult to stay in zone two, right? So I would have to pick a pace and kind of stick with that pace because – a lot of times I would pull into zone three. Like if I was doing three laps, like the 15 miles, I would start the, the cardiac drift would happen where I would, you know, go into zone three a lot. Right. right. And it would take a lot to pull it back. Um, but my beginning was in weightlifting going way back, way the hell back to, I think in my book, I said my eighth or ninth birthday, because when you start doing something like that, you don't really remember when you start. And you're going, and you, and folks, if you're new to this podcast, you're going, wait a minute, an eight year old, come on, nine years old, what are you talking about? <clears throat> Here's the thing. And, you know, I'm recapping what was in Fitness, Fitness Confidential, but here goes. When I was a young kid, um, I had a really bad speech impediment that came as a result of, uh, I was legally deaf when I was really young, right? So I had a really bad problem. And um, they were able to do a couple of surgeries and they got my hearing back. I, I still have some hearing disorder, but, but you know, I, I hear perfectly fine. But it left me with, I sounded like what a deaf person sounds like. I never learned how to, you know, use a lot of diction. Any diction you hear now, is just been a lifetime. I'm 62 years old. It's just been a lifetime of work to get to this level. Um, throw on top of that, coming from the Bayou and Cajun country, which is its own language, its own patois, as it would be called. You know, all of it kind of plays into, you know, where I was in life. And I was being beat up in school a lot. That was back in the days when kids would get their ass kicked because they were different all that kind of stuff. This is not a woe is me story. This is a nerdy kid story who, the only thing I was interested in was watching Wide World of Sports when I was a kid. Because why? it was a show that came on on Saturdays. The thrill of victory, the agony of defeat, the human drama of athletic competition, blah, 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 blah. And that show would come on on a Saturday afternoon. And um, I was all in. We're talking about the early 70s. Why? Because it was the wide world of sports. And it would show things like snow skiing. Now, when you grow up in a swamp on a bayou in southern Louisiana, 
and you see snow, that's exciting. And it was never snowing where I was when I was a kid. So if, if you, you know, they would show from Kitzbühel, Austria, you know, the skiing, the ski jump competition. That was one of my favorites the ski jump competition from Kitzbühel where these guys were flying through the air and coming back in and doing this whole thing. Right. So I was into watching that and um, I would never miss it. And, but right after that, <clears throat> there was this fitness show that would come on with a guy named Jack LaLanne. Now everyone knows he's the, the godfather of fitness. Jack LaLanne would come on and I found him interesting. The guy wore a onesie and he sat on a chair backwards and he would talk about health and fitness and he would talk about nutrition. And eat. by the way, some of the same things I talk about here, eat protein, you got to eat eggs and whole milk. And he would talk about all this stuff. And then he would demonstrate exercises. Now, some of the exercises were pretty simple where he would have his legs spread, you know, about two or three feet apart. And he would have his hands on his hips, and then he would go down, keeping his knees straight, and go down and touch his, his left foot with his right hand, and then come back up and put that hand back on the hip and go down and touch his right foot with his left hand and repeat. Sometimes he would do jumping jacks, and this was all the calisthenics and the warm-up stuff. And then from there, he would go into... Uh, <clears throat> doing exercises with dumbbells and barbells. And I was very interested because Mr. Lalane had a big vein running down his bicep on both sides. And his biceps, even to a young kid like me, an eight-year-old, they, they, the connotation, right, they connoted strength to me. And I, my young brain put together that if you lift heavy things above your head, you can get these bulbous muscles and these veins running in your arms, just like Jack LaLanne. Now, here's the difference. When I watched cartoons as a kid, I knew that, you know, the heroes in the cartoons, I knew that they weren't real. I knew that Superman wasn't real. I knew that all of these kind of cartoony bodybuilder, the Hulk and all that, you know, I knew all of that wasn't real. I also knew that Jack LaLanne wasn't those. He was like a real life flesh hero that was lifting something above his head and doing jumping jacks and push ups. So, what did I do? After White World of Sports every week, I would then watch Jack LaLanne and try to mimic everything he was doing, except I had one big giant issue. I was able to do the push-ups. Um, I was able to do the jumping jacks and touching my toes, keeping my legs straight. And I would really pay attention and watch. I guess I was always keen at watching and, and mimicking exactly what he was doing. The problem I had <clears throat> was I didn't have weights. So by the time I, and by the way, I only did these exercises once a week. I didn't realize that you were supposed to do them repeatedly over and over and over. And I didn't, I never saw any muscle gain, but I just knew if I kept doing them one day, I would see something. For God's sake, I was like eight or nine, right? So by the time I was like 10, I had found a, um, a pipe. It was a metal pipe, but it was hollowed out, and it was pretty lightweight. But to me, it looked like what Jack was lifting over his head. And um, I found, you know, you could find bricks, like bricks that are left on the house. I, you know, sometimes they have three holes in them, and that allows the, the mortar to go down to the bricks. It makes it strong, a stronger hold onto the house. I found some of those because they were building a house right down the street from my house and they had bricks. So I, I snatched two of those, brought them home. And um, I put my bricks on the end of the bar and tried to mimic what Jack was doing. The deadlift, the, the high pull, the shoulder press. 
I couldn't do the bench press because I didn't have a bench. And um, what would happen is the bricks would slide off of my lightweight pole. So what I would do is I would put the bricks as close to my hands as possible and try to keep them touching my hand while I was trying to lift the bar above my head. And I was so adamant about doing this that I started cutting up the edges of my hands, right? I would have calluses and cuts on my hands. Hmm. So my great uncle, I say great, do, do people know Anna? Do they know what a great aunt or great uncle yeah, is? Everybody has one, right? Whether well, or not they're alive is the question. Right. Well, I, some people go great uncle. Was he great to you? No, a great uncle. So an uncle, like if my mom has a brother, which she did, that's an uncle. My grandfather's brothers that you would consider those great uncles, right? So one removed. And we lived around all of our relatives. And my, my uncle Frank would always regale me with stories about being a golden glove boxer and kicking everyone's ass in the army back in, in the big one, WW2, and doing all this kind of stuff. And the guy was built like Barney Fife. He was just skinny and, you know, the whole thing. But he knew how to throw a punch and he would teach me how to throw punches and the whole thing. And one day, you know, he was always interested in football and he was, a, a, you know, just a really cool guy he saw these cuts on my hands and he said, my God, what happened? You have it on both of your hands. What happened? And I showed him my makeshift barbell and uh, I said, Uncle Frank, I'm going to be strong just like Mr. LaLanne one day. And he goes, Jack LaLanne? And I said, yeah. He goes, how do you know Jack LaLanne? I said, he comes on after Wide World of Sports on the television. And he goes, so what do you do with your barbell? And I showed him, right? I said, now you got to keep the bar, you got to keep it steady, Uncle Frank, because if you move it, the weights will fall off. And sometimes it hits my feet. I've hurt my feet a few times. But I'm showing him, I said, I got to keep it close to my hands and the whole thing. And I saw this man, I saw this smile, and I think he was also choking back tears. Mm -hmm. Italians are a bit emotional. We're emotional. Yeah, a little bit. And he goes, how often do you do this? And I said, once a week, just like Mr. Lelaine. And he goes, well, you realize you got to do it more than once a week if you want your muscles to grow. And I went, oh, so that's why it's not working. <laughs> right? Not the fact that you're 10 years old. And well, 10 years old and one set. I didn't realize you were supposed to do multi. Jack's show was a half an hour. You know, you had to show yeah. a bunch of things. Right. I didn't get I, I didn't get the nuances of working out, right? So he goes, I'm gonna introduce you to someone. And I I tell this whole story in Fitness Confidential. He goes, I'm gonna introduce you to someone, uh, Joe Bonadonna. And I said, Well, who's this? And he goes, He's better than Jack LaLanne. And I said to myself, not to him, I went, that's bullshit because nobody's better than Jack LaLanne. <laughs> but I met Joe, and guess what? This dude, it looked like someone hung two honey-baked hams on his chest. I mean, this guy had a big, giant chest. He had giant arms. He had veins running through his body. His, his legs, he looked like a superhero. First time I met Joe and he shook my hand and he spoke to me like a normal person. And I say normal person because I was so used to being teased and just being alone and the whole thing. And I told my mom, I met Joe Bonadonna. And she said, oh my God, we, we all grew up together. It's like, you know Joe? It's like, no Joe. I mean, we're, we're like brother and sister. And my dad's like, Wait, you met Joe? How did you meet your Uncle Frank took me to Joe's house. What are you doing at Joe? I got this weight set. They're like, why, why didn't you ask us? I was like, I, I didn't know Joe existed. That's why. You guys never told me about this crazy Italian guy that you all grew up together in the slums together when you were kids. And uh, Joe became this real strong guy. He was a great athlete in high school, you know, and the whole thing. So I'm learning all about my, this, my new hero right? Joe Bonadonna. And 
you know, again, stories in the book, I talk about how he said, look, I need you to show up every day at my gym. He had all these weights. A lot of it, some of it was homemade stuff. You know, like he had, you know, he had welders make stuff for him. None of it was the shiny equipment you see today. He had leg extension and leg curl machines, homemade. His bench was a, a pine, What it, it was thick, heavy pine. I used to bench press and my shoulder blades would cut into the pine. I would have blood on the back of my T-shirts when I was done with wor working out <laughs> when I was a kid because I was bony, right? Like medieval torture. I did not. And he told me, he goes, one thing is you got to be committed. Don't miss a day. Don't miss a day. We're going to do this. Well, you and don't tell Vinnie Tortorich not to miss a day because he will I, not I would, go, I would go to school if I had pneumonia or a flu or anything. Yeah. I would go to school because... I needed that bus to get me to school so I can walk to Joe's from mm. school. I, mm -hmm. I needed that, that conveyance to get me somewhere near yeah. Joe's house. Right. And that became my commitment. And as the story goes, by the time I was like, I don't know, 12, you know, people that I, I didn't know about this, but people that heard about this kid that can bench, 200 pounds. <laughs> Folks, I know it sounds crazy, and you, I know you think I'm BSing, but I, I can bring friends on to this podcast. And everybody heard about this wonder kid who could bench 200 pounds, right? Now, by the time I was 12, I had hit puberty somewhere around, around 11 and a half. By the time I was 12, I was putting on muscle and uh, looking pretty damn good. I didn't know it at the time. I've gone back and seen photos of myself because you don't have an awareness of yourself when you're that no. young. But Joe started taking me uh, to Baton Rouge to do lifting expeditions. Uh, look up Boyer Co. Anna. He was um, a major bodybuilder back in the day. I don't know how to spell that. B-O-Y-E-R? B-O-Y-E-R-C-O. Oh, there he is. Look at that guy. Yeah, I met oh, Boyer Co. when I was 12. I went to Boyer Co.'s. Uh, I went to where he was training in Baton Rouge or somewhere. I think he was in Baton Rouge. He was a major bodybuilder, really short guy, shorter than Joe. And they would have me bench press <clears throat> in front of all these other men. And oh, I didn't God. understand why they thought what I was doing was impressive because they would throw three plates on, right, and, and just pump it like it was nothing. But they were somehow impressed with me, right? <laughs> That's so sweet. And, I love it. Yeah. And, and, you know, I met all of these guys. I went to Fox's gym, people who listen to us from Baton Rouge, went to Fox's and all these other, Fox was the guy's name. Every gym was named after the guy, right? So by the time I started playing football, I realized I needed to do more with squats and lunges and leg press and all that. Joe got me into that. And I'm here to tell you today, okay, genetics comes into play when you play football, when you play D1 football. There's no doubt about it. But he made me into the athlete that I became, right? It's amazing. Um, you know, I was able, I was easily able to squat into the mid 500s, deadlift close to that, you know, bench pressed over 400 pounds. By the way, folks, all natty, all natural. No. no gear no, no juice gear. no juice as they call it they call it gear now folks if you don't know what the lingo is i never is, heard of that until you told me yeah um vinnie mm -hmm. i have been instructed to mm -hmm. go um i gotta take him in so okay. so anna here's what we're i wanted do. i told i texted him just now and said i'm gonna do about 10 more minutes with you and then i'm gonna let you do the weightlifting portion all right, so Anna, um, uh, folks, what you don't realize is the reason I went into that long story. It was a great Anna story. Had, I think it just pays to tell Anna, it again. Anna had to step away for a minute. So Anna, a little health go, emergency going on in my household, so you, I need you to go. go right now um, and deal with that, and everything's going to be okay, right, Anna? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Everything's always okay. Um, gonna, I didn't know if you wanted to tell the Sam Elliott story real quick before you get into your one hundred and one. No, let's save it. Let's let's, let's hang. Save it. it. Let's tease it out. Let's tease it out one more week. And look, the fact that Anna picked up the mic today is commendable. Um, 
<laughs> I'm sorry to bail. I love you guys. And um, I'm going to do all of your plugs for you at the end. You. Don't worry. Uh, and I'm, and I'm by the way, this this comes out, I think, Monday, November 4th. And I believe if all goes as planned, Wednesday, November 6th, I'm going to be on Watch What Happens Live on Bravo Behind the Bar. So for those of you listening who are Bravo fans, I see you. We see each other. Yeah, um, whatever that's that inside, means. That's inside Bravo joke. So ch tune in to Watch What Happens Live. I'm going to be behind the bar. And Vinny there going. she goes. Okay. <laughs> there, there I go. No, um, thank you, Vinny. I'm but sorry. Anna, please, Anna, you have to leave your browser open, if you don't mind. Do not. Yes. Oh, no, I have to take my computer with me. I'm going to be gone for like all night. Ooh. All right. So um, X out. And if we don't have a video for this week, we don't have a video. I bet we will. Okay. Let me we'll leave. We'll let me leave studio and let's see what it does. And I won't close it out just yet, but um, okay. I'm sad to miss the weightlifting one-on-one. Everybody get a pad of paper out. Cause you're going to think that you can memorize everything he's going to say. You mm -hmm. can't, you have to write it down. I promise. Okay. Bye. Love you, Anna. Good luck. Love you. Bye. There she goes. So uh, at any rate, <clears throat> that's how I got into weightlifting. Um, I, I count weightlifting as, why I am where I am in life today. It, you know, I owe everything to it. If you if you're watching this on a video, you'll notice I have a gym. That gym is not there as a prop. That is a proper rack that's behind me. And you see a barbell hanging on that rack. I have a full gym in my house and I use it. I also go to work out at a gym in town because I'm here to tell you that. It's difficult and sometimes boring, and it's better to be around other people. If you're suffering with other people, um, it's easier. The question always comes up, what's better for weight loss, aerobics or anaerobics? And we, we answered that question last week. The answer is, I don't know, and if anyone has a definitive answer or says something with any sort of certitude, they're bullshitting you. Um, I believe that we need to work both engines, the aerobic engine for cardiovascular health. It, you know, it works your mitochondria, it works your heart, it, uh, it helps you build stamina, and also anaerobics. It helps build muscle. And as we get older, we have a little something called sarcopenia. Uh, if you're building muscles, you're going to also be building soft tissue. And if you're building soft tissue, you're also building bone. So it's Everything is important. Anaerobic, 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 and aerobics. So there you have it. <clears throat> um, with that in mind, <clears throat> weightlifting is pretty damn simple, folks. It's kind of like the dentist used to say. Only floss the teeth you're planning on keeping. There's a lot of truth in that. I always say only work the muscles you plan on keeping. So people go, oh, wait a minute, that's a lot. Do I have to work every muscle in my body? Short answer, yes. Every muscle in your body needs to be worked, okay? So how do you get that done? So, well, it could be as simple as just doing compound movements. So if you start, <clears throat> if you consider the upper body, you can either push something away from you or pull something towards you. And you can do that in three or four different manners, right? So you can push weights above your head. That's called shoulder press. So it's going to primarily work your shoulders, but it's not going to only work your shoulders. You're going to also be working your triceps. You're going to be working the top part of your pecs, the top part of your chest, a lot of the muscles in your back around your scapulae your, your um, traps and everything else are supporters of that. So you're going to be working all of that. So you're pushing something away. You're pushing it above your head. And then if you want to come a quarter way down, you could do an incline press. This is going to work, again, your shoulders, your deltoids, your traps. Uh, not your traps so much. I'm, I'm, I meant to say your um, pecs. And uh, you're working the top part of your chest. And if you do something right over the middle, that's pushing right above you. That's your chest. You're pushing something directly away from you. It's like doing a push-up. It's the same thing. Now you're doing a compound movement again. Triceps, shoulders, 
and chest. Now, there's one other movement you can push directly down towards your hips. You have to be strong enough to do dips. There's an exercise called dips. So you could push up, you could push out, and you could push down. And that's all you really have to do, right? You've now worked all of your muscles in a pushing motion, right? When you're pulling something towards you, you could do a lat pull down. That's pulling from above your head down to your clavicle. The clavicle is those two bones right below your neck. It's called a lat pull down. You can do them wide, you can do them close. Either way, it's a compound movement. A compound movement means you're moving more than one joint at one time. I'll tell you what, a, what the opposite is in just a minute. But you're moving, when you're pulling, you're moving your wrist, your elbow, and your shoulder joint and you're pulling it towards yourself. That's a compound movement, okay? Then you could do a rowing style exercise, meaning you're pulling something towards you, right towards your navel or right towards your rib cage. You could do it wide, you can do it close, right? Compound movement, you're using the same joints. You're pulling something towards you. All of this is working your back. You're working your lat or your latissimus dorsi, if I want to get fancy with you. You got to have your rhomboids, your, <clears throat> you're working your, your, um, your trap muscles, and all of the, the levator scapulae and the teres majors and minors and all of the back muscles, the upper back muscles. You're pulling everything. And you can also do a high pull where you're starting with a barbell at your waist, you're standing up, and you pull that bar to right below your chin with your elbows above the bar. All of these motions, okay, are compound movements. If you walked out of the gym after that, you've done a complete upper body workout, okay? We'll get into sets and reps in just a minute. Now, for the legs, the legs are even simpler, right? Only compound movements, meaning you're going to use your hips, your knees, and your ankles. So a good example would be squats. A lot of people are going to go, I hate squats. I can't do squats. I have a bad lower back. Now they have a machine called a belt squat where you, you're holding the weight around your waist. A lot of gyms have the new belt squat style machine. You can also do a leg press. Most gyms have two or three different forms of leg press. These are all compound movements. You could do lunges, which is if you're a Christian, it's like ginger flecting, right? Uh, you could do it without weights. You could do it with weights. That's with weights. That's just a one-legged squat, okay? That's a lunge. People are going to say, well, what about uh, Bulgarian split squats, right? That's the same as a, um, a lunge, except you're putting the back leg higher, so it's, it's causing a different effect on your leg. So those are all compound movements. If you do a deadlift, um, yes, you're using your arms, but it's a deadlift, it's a leg exercise. That's also a compound movement. If you've done all of those exercises, you've done everything you can do to work your body. So now you're going to ask the question before I get into do, giving you guys the different types of routines. But Vinny, you left a lot of things out. I didn't hear you talk about curls or triceps or deltoid raises or flies or uh, hamstring curls or quadricep extensions. Why didn't you talk about those? All of those are auxiliary exercises, right? They don't naturally occur in nature. What that means is you're singling out, you're isolating a muscle. Example, the barbell curl. You're isolating just to do a curl motion, right? And that the, the effect of that is you'll get more bulbous biceps. If you did a tricep extension, you're going to get more bulbous. You're going to add more you know, muscle to your, your triceps. But it doesn't do anything in the real world. Now, if you're a bodybuilder or you're interested in bodybuilding, there's absolutely nothing wrong with these exercises. The only problem I find with these exercises is that they take a lot of time. And um, I just don't have that kind of time. I don't know about you. 
if you're doing a lat pull, if you're doing a rowing exercise, if you're doing a high pull, if you're doing pull-ups, you're working your bicep. If you're doing bench press, shoulder press, dips, you're working your triceps. If you have the time and you want to finish them off by doing those things, knock yourself out. The same with chest flies. It's You're now isolating the pectoralis majors and minors by doing chest flies, right? So yeah, knock yourself out and do those. No problem. If you have time, will you get better by doing those? Yes. To a degree, you will see more muscle. And if you're into that, you know, you want to do competitions, you want to look great on the beach. But trust me, I don't do any of those. And I get everything I need just from doing the compound movements. Um, with the legs, the leg, the leg curls and the leg extensions, same thing. Speaking of Jack LaLanne, he was the guy that invented the original machine to do leg extensions and leg curls. Most people don't know that. Back when Sandoval and all those guys back in the early 1900s were just lifting barbells and dumbbells, those devices did not exist. It was brought in with the likes of uh, my hero, Jack LaLanne, and one of my other heroes, who's a little young, a lot young, about the same age as Jack, Vince Gironda, who was also a great trainer and trained a lot of the Hollywood elite back in the day. Um, those guys ushered in a lot of those machines that we see today. Um, so it's not really needed. I normally have people do leg extensions and leg curls to actually rehab a knee injury that comes from cycling or rowing or mostly running because of the imbalance you get from doing a repetitive sport. Um, is it needed? No. Is it okay to do? Absolutely. Uh, the other one that I did not mention is the calf raise, or some people call them heel raises. Are these necessary? No. If you want to have nice-looking calves, do them. How many? You do them until you – I always say do calves until your ass hurts. That means you've done the proper amount. Calves are hard to build up. Now, <clears throat> if you guys can give me a quick break because I've been talking and drinking and drinking espresso here – and since I don't have Anna to do an ad for me so I can drink water, I'm going to stop here for a second and drink a sip of water. Sorry. <clears throat> Back in the days when I did radio, you talk for 10 minutes and then you go into commercials. And that's generally when we would drink water and go take a leak. But when you're doing long form by yourself like this, a monologue, sometimes you just run out of gas on your your back of your throat. It gets a bit dry. Sorry about that. Anyway, <clears throat> reps and sets. Now, if you listen to bro science, you'll get all kinds of answers. Some of it correct, none of it wrong. Is some better than others? The truthful answer is, I don't know. I've been very successful over the years doing all sorts of different type of protocol. I'll give you some of the general protocol that everyone likes. And then within that, there's all kinds of stuff like ascending sets, declining sets, just all different kinds of stuff. But I generally like doing three sets. And you're going to ask about reps. We can talk about reps in a minute. But I like doing three sets. Here's why. If you do one set, well, we'll talk about one set later, but I like doing a warm a warm up set where I can easily do 12 or even 15 reps <clears throat> and I'm still not worn out. And as I get older, that becomes more and more important. And it should be important for you too. So you will go, well, Vin, why would you waste a set? It's not a wasted set. You're getting synovial fluid to move to your joints. You're waking up the muscle in the area you're getting ready to work. And, you know, you'll feel that kind of wake up blood pump sort of thing. Second set, I put a weight on to where I don't want to get past eight reps. 
if I get to nine or 10 reps, I'll make a note of that. Some people keep a notebook, but I'm pretty good at remembering the stuff. I've been doing it for God only knows 50 years now. I make a note that next time I need to go a little heavier because I made it past my eight or nine reps. I do not go to complete failure, but I go to where if I did one more set, I would fail. I'm, I'm sorry, one more rep, I would fail. And then I wait another minute and I do a third set. And on the third set, I go to failure. Now, folks, you have to be smart. If you're doing bench press and you're doing it free weights, you cannot go to failure if you're alone. So if I'm in the gym in town, I'll just grab whoever's near me and go, hey, keep an eye on me and take this weight off of me when I can't get it off, get it off of me anymore. And I get that set to failure that way. That's just the way it works, okay? When it comes to um, shoulder press, it's easy to get to failure and just put the weight down. Usually I rack it. If I'm doing dumbbell shoulder press, I'll just bring them down and put them on the ground. Do not throw weights around. Do not drop them. It doesn't impress anyone. It makes you look like an asshole. Do not do that. But that's how I get my third sets to failure. Of course, when I do dips, when I end up in a down position, I can't get up anymore in the third set. That's <clears throat> the last rep. It's easy to do with pull-ups and lat pulls and rowing and all of that. First set, easy. Second set, get a good pump on it. Third set to failure. Now, a lot of times you can't get to complete failure. And you don't have to. As long as you notice that you're gaining strength over time, right? So people go, what, go 80%? No, go 90, 95%. Get that last rep out. As long as you notice that every couple of weeks your weights increase and you're getting stronger, you're doing enough to recruit new muscle cells and build your body, right? So that's fine. Now you're going to say, well, Vin, you gave me a little protocol here to go with the exercises. How often? Well, if you work a muscle once a week, the best you can hope for is to not get weaker. You won't particularly get stronger, but you won't get weaker. And if you're someone that's past 50 years old and sarcopenia is taking over, sarcopenia is going to win that game a lot faster. I suggest working a muscle twice a week. I'm going to tell you how I do it, okay? I'm going to use Monday as the first day. I'll go in and do my push. And by the way, it only takes me 30 minutes or so to do this. You know, I'll do the push, the, the bench press, the shoulder press, the dips, the, you know, this kind of thing. Um, that's all on Monday. Okay. And uh, on Tuesday, I go in and I do pull. That's either pull-ups or lat pulls, wide and close. Uh, if I do a, three sets of wide, I'll do two sets of close or vice versa. I'll do some rowing. I might do two different rowing exercises, dumbbell rows on the bench, and then uh, maybe cable rows, or I'll do prison-style barbell rows, which is still one of my favorites. You need a strong back to do it. If you have back trouble, don't do that one, okay? Um, on one of those two days, I will do an ab routine. Oh, wait, Vin, you didn't mention abs yet. Yes, I'll do a couple of sets of abs. I might do the Roman chair. I might do the slings. I might do my inverted. You know, I have the gravity boots here at the house. I might do some floor abs. I'll pick two. What I'll do is I'll pick two exercises and do two sets of each. And I'll get as close to failure as I can. When I get that good burn, that's all you need to do. Okay? You don't have to go past that. You're getting, you're working the muscle. You're sending a message, hey, let's recruit new muscle cells here and let's keep moving, right? So I'll do that on one of those two workouts. Let's just say I did it on Monday. Tuesday is the pull day. Now, Wednesday is legs. Never skip leg day, as they say. I might do a t-shirt, never skip leg day. On leg day, you will do, you know, Look, I started different every time. Sometimes I start on squats, 
truth be known, I do five sets. Wait, what? Five sets is a lot of squats. I like to grease the skids. I'm old, right? So I'll do a set with nothing on the bar. And then I'll do another set where I might throw a couple of tens on each side and really grease the skids, do 15 reps of both of those. So that's 30 reps, you know, just to make sure my back is playing along, my knees, everything is doing what I want it to do. And then after that, I'll do a good warm-up set and then add some more weight, do a medium set. And of course, I'm not going to do a set to failure. And they, you know, like some powerlifting gyms, they have slings made so that you can end up at the bottom. I just go, I don't go to failure on those. I go until I think I can't do another rep and then I put them away. When my back is acting up on those, I go right over to the belt squats and do that instead. Um, if my back is not acting up, I usually go over and do deadlift next. After that, I will choose either lunges with or without weights. And usually it's with, you know, I'll put a barbell on my back and do lunges that way. And then um, <clears throat> the other thing I may or may not do is leg press. The deal is, is I'll pick three leg exercises. Usually it's, here, here are the four I generally do. All right, so I do squats, lunges, deadlifts, leg press, okay? I pick three of the four every time. Squats are almost always in there, but it might be squats, leg press, deadlift. The next time it might be squats, lunges, leg press. It changes up every time, okay? You should do the same thing. Now, that's a three-day routine. Sometimes I take the fourth day off, make that an aerobic day. By the way, I do aerobics on all the other days anyway. I have time. This is what I do for a living. I'm very blessed that I get to do that. I may take the next day off, or I may not take the next day off. It depends on what's coming up over the weekend. Let's say I have a skeet shooting competition, or Serena and I are going kayaking, or something is coming up. Uh, I got to go give a speech somewhere. I'll just go right back on Thursday, go to bench, you know, doing push. Now, when I go in the second time that week, I won't start with the bench. Okay. I will start with something else, shoulder press, and then maybe do dips next, and then do the bench third. Now the bench is in third place. I'm not going to do anywhere near the weight I did the last time because I've worn myself out already, but I gave someone something else the clean shot of, of really working hard, right? So I change it up every time. On pull day, if I started with lat pulls and all that the first time, the first time that week, I'll come back the second time that week and do something different. Usually, I'll start with rowing, cable rows, dumbbell rows, barbell rows, and then go on to pull-ups. Maybe if I did lat pulls, I'll do pull-ups. And then um, the third day, which would be Saturday, I will go in and do the legs again. Okay. You might be sitting there going, Vin, I don't have six days a week. Good news. I have a four-day-a-week routine for you. You could go four days a week. You just put push and pull on one day. That'll make it a longer day, probably an hour, an hour, and 15 minutes. The next day you do legs. You take the third day off. You go back in and do push and pull again on Thursday and then do legs on Friday. So now we just took a six-day routine and turned it into a four-day routine. Or you can do this. But this ends up doing one, you know, this is just a maintenance routine. Push on Monday, pull on Wednesday, legs on Friday. Or you could do push and pull on Monday, legs on Wednesday, and then push and pull on Friday so that the next week you start with legs on Monday. So you see every other week you'll be doing legs twice, and on the opposite week you'll be doing upper body twice. That's another routine that works well for people who are challenged with time. I'm talking about you parents with each parent with a job and you got two kids, right? So now we'll get down to the twice-a-week routine. 
that would be where you're doing one set to failure. Does it work? Oh, hell yeah, it works. I've done this with a lot of clients. I've actually done it with myself a lot. I do not like this routine. As a matter of fact, my good friend, the billionaire, Don Coddington. It's the billionaire, Don Coddington's Friday, five o'clock. Has been doing one set to failure for a lot of years. Um, and he looks amazing. I mean, he puts he keeps a lot of muscle on his body doing one set to failure. If you're going to do that, you have to be very honest with yourself. And I'm going to tell you, it sucks. And we're going to have Ben Bokikio on the show. He might even be on before this show comes out. Ben Bokikio was there in the early days with, with uh, Arthur Jones, who came up with the whole Nautilus system, the 12 reps to failure system. And um, it works. It works like a charm. It's just very difficult to do. As a matter of fact, Don goes to a trainer in New York that does, you know, super slow, one set to failure, kicking your ass. And you got to have someone standing over you yelling at you to really get it done. I'm very, very good at doing this stuff. And I still have to push myself because your brain keeps telling you, take me out of this pain. But I've seen people successfully do 30 minutes twice a week, like a Monday, Friday, or a Monday, Wednesday, or Monday, Thursday routine, something like that, twice a week, and keep sarcopenia at bay. I've actually seen them put muscle on. It works like a charm, but it's difficult. I'm just going to leave that there. If you feel like you're one of those people that can do it, you can do it. Now, I've seen people um, just do what, what I would call calisthenics, but they're not really where they'll do a couple of times a week, one set of push-ups to failure. They'll do one set of sit-ups to failure. They'll do one set of planks where you're holding yourself in a static position to failure one set of pull-ups to failure, and then ass to grass squats or, you know, lunges or, you know, sitting on a wall or doing something like that. They never walk into a gym. I'm going to go through them again. Push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, and some sort of leg squat. You could do them without weights or you could do lunges or you could do wall sits to failure. I've seen people do you get incredible results of doing that either every other day or twice a week. It's amazing what you could do with no weights. So I just want to put that out there. You don't have to have a fancy gym. I don't want to hear Vinny. I don't, I can't afford a gym membership. I can't afford to be away from my family. I take care of my elderly, blah, blah, blah. I, I've heard every story where there's a will, there's a way. And if you go, well, how am I supposed to get a pull up bar? Amazon, less than 50 bucks, you can get a proper pull-up bar that fits in a doorway, and it works like a charm. When I had my makeshift gym during the beginning of COVID, I called Amazon and got one of those pull-up bars that I gave to the neighbor when I moved into this house, and the neighbor still uses it. She told me the other day, I'm still doing my pull-ups on, on that bar. Where there's a will, there's a way. You can do all of this, okay? No big deal. I think I've covered it here. Um, if you have any questions, I do have the VIP group. is still open. You can go to vinnytartaries.com forward slash row, R-O-W-E. The Mike Rowe thing is still open. You can go there and sign up. You can ask me as many weightlifting questions there as you'd like. We, we're doing another one of these uh, VIP calls on the, the 31st of this month. This I don't think this show is coming out until beginning of November. Anna and I have to get ahead for obvious reasons. We have travel coming up. Um, but you can join the VIP group. I still have it open. Go there. Do that. Uh, boo -boo -boo -boo. Let's see. Anna Vecino has a book out. It's sitting right over there. It's Eat Happy Italian. It's her new book. It's kicking ass, folks. Get it for yourself. Get it for Christmas for friends. Eat Happy Italian is Anna's new book. Go to anavacino.substack.com to learn everything and where Anna's going to be and how she's going to be and everything else. Uh, with me, I just mentioned the VIP group. Also, my movie Dirty Keto is out there on Amazon. 
So check that out. Oh, Villa Capelli, Villa Capelli olive oil. I forgot. I was so into the weightlifting routine. I forgot to say this. Villa Capelli, longest running sponsor of this show, Villa Capelli. People ask me all the time about olive oil. Go get the best, Villa Capelli. Let them know we sent you. Put in promo code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E. You'll get 10% off every single time, not just the first time. Every single time I put the discount code in when I go to Villa Capelli. I'm no better than you. They don't send me free oil or anything else. I get it. As a matter of fact, I just ordered two three-liter tins. I just ordered six liters of Villa Capelli. I put in the promo code, plus I got free shipping because I spent more than $125 after the promo code. So check that out. Uh, we played a little Chris Stapleton on the way in. We're going to play a little Chris Stapleton on the way out. On behalf of Anna Vocino, my name is Vinny Tartarich. Put life living and do it with this guy.